there, fellow Wackadoos. Hello again, and welcome back to Dr. Doodle's Crew Basic Asylum, uh, where legal department has informed me I can officially claim to be the greatest programmer in the room. Yeah, so here we are, uh, episode, um, what is it, episode QBA 22, I guess. Uh, maybe it's down here, I don't know what the title is. Anyway, QBA 22, yeah, and uh, this one's called uh, Magic Square. But you know, I never really liked math puzzles as a kid, because they always made me feel dumb. Well, so then I heard something years ago called the Magic Square. Now, I don't know if you're familiar with this, but basically, if you got a square, uh, three by three rows, uh, you put in the digits one through nine, uh, but no repeats, no zero, and the whole thing is that the rows, the columns, and diagonals all need to add up the same number. So I thought to myself, self, myself said what? I said, how hard can it be? And now I feel stupid. I just could never figure it out. Because I'm not good with numbers. But you know, I thought to myself, self, yeah. Who do we know is pretty good with numbers? Yeah, that's right. So I wrote me a program to do the magic square. And uh, this is it. So let's take a deep dive in here and see what makes this thing tick. <laughs> All right. Well, now I decided on, uh, on covering this program here this time around because I, I noticed the last two episodes uh, running on oh, 45 minutes, close to an hour. So I figured I'd try something maybe a little quicker. Uh, this one should be a little more straightforward. There's no real interaction. You just wind it up, watch it go. So let's watch it go. Here we go. Here we go. And there we have it, the magic square. We got our numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and you can see it, it's changing. But the idea, of course, is these three rows, these three columns, and the two diagonals should add to the same number. And here we see the sum of the sum of the columns, some of the rows, and the diagonals. Now this goes on for a while, and uh, when when it's finished, we see a report showing that it's finished. So let's see here. We'll exit here and take a look how the scripter works. So we ha here we have our code to solve the magic square puzzle. And of course, we're calling it QBA22.base magic square by Dr. Doodle, copy left 2023, as, as always. But I got to thinking now, if I don't know how to solve the magic square, how am I going to program the computer to solve the magic square? Well, the obvious uh, solution here is just try, try brute force. In, in other words, try every combination or permutation there is, every combination of numbers everywhere, but... How are we going to do that? I got to think on this, and I, I went to this little crib sheet here. I created this. This is to avoid confusion. I'm calling the, the top left square that's square A, square B, square C, then of course below that D, E, and F, and last three G, H, and I. And I thought what I'd do, I'd treat these nine squares like one nine digit number. So, for example, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Uh, that would be the lowest number we could start. 1, 2, that'd be what? 123 million, uh, what? 4, 5, 6, 456,789. Yeah. So, that's the lowest number we could put into here. Now, the highest number, of course, would be 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And so what we'll do, we'll just start with that number, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. We'll keep adding 1 until we get to the 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Well, all we need to do at that point is we need to uh, to throw out uh, invalid numbers, like with a number with a zero, uh, uh, double digits, two threes, two sevens, whatever. We need to eject those. And then once we get a valid number, a candidate, we'll test it to see if they all add up. So here we go. Let's give this a shot. We start here, let's get this out of the way. Start here, QBA 22, as of course, Magic Square by Dr. Doodle, Q, Q, copy left 2023. Now, we're initializing our program here and start with def int a through z. <laughs> I don't know how many times I've said this, so I really need to elaborate this. We're just setting our, our variables to integer by default, just speeds up the process, makes less work for the computer. So now we're setting square A to 1. Boom. Square B equals 2. Square C equals 3. And 4, 5, and 6, 7, 8, 9. As I mentioned, that's the 9-digit number. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And we're going all the way up to 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Testing along the way whether it solves our, our puzzle. So we load our data into our, our squares, our cells. Now we go sub do screen. And let's look at do screen. Come down here. All right. Here's the do screen subroutine. Uh, clear the screen, set the color 13.5. The 13.5 was what? That's like a, 
uh, a light purple, uh, yeah, and with a dark purple background, here's all these prints that just prints the square and the, the square around it, uh, or the frame around it, I should say. We return. That's all there is to do screen. Now we go back up here, do screen, go sub fill square. And fill square, here, let me just do this here. I'm going to temporarily put in sleep. Now we run this. Okay, so th the do screen, of course, it created this square, filled the square, it just filled the numbers in. And as you can see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So let's exit here, take this out of here. We go to the fill square. How does fill square work? We'll come down here. All right. So fill square, all it does, we locate, basically we're printing the numbers, the square A, square B, square C, you're printing our variables into the square. So we set the color 14, which is yellow, locate 8, 834, print square A, and what we're doing, we're printing the square A, which in this case is 1, right up here, uh, locate 838, print square B, put that there, look, well you can't see, but I'll over here. Locate 842 square C and just as above so below more or less Yeah, we're locating we're printing the the, the information the variable D E and F and then uh, G H and I So that loads the numbers into the screen so we can see them on screen. Okay. Now we create our sum someone is someone 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 is square A and B plus C a, B, and C. Uh, sum 2 is D, E, and F, so square D, E, and F. Sum 3 is G, H, and I, these three here. Now we go for our columns. Sum 4 is A, D, and G, first column. Uh, B, E, and H is the second column. And then uh, sum 6, C, F, and I, C, F, and I, right? Then finally, sum 7 is square A, E, and I, which is what? This diagonal. And sum 8 is square C, E, and G, so C, E, and G. So these are all our sums. They're the top row, second row, bottom row, uh, left column, middle column, right column, and then the two diagonals. Once we got our sums, we locate with color 13 to put that kind of aqua color, and then we locate some print sums. It's simple as that. Well, we're doing first we first we set our color to 14. We locate and print all our our numbers where they need to be, and then uh, we come down here calculate our sums and print those sums where they need to be. All right, now we've loaded our square with numbers and it's time to go sub test sums. Now test sums is the key to whole thing. It tests the sums to see if they are equal, in which case we solve the puzzle, we can print our report and we'll know what digits go where. Boom, problem solved. Now, if, if it's not, well then we just try another number. So we'll go to test sums. We start out with uh, if sum one, that's the, the top row here, if sum root one is not equal to sum two, that's sum two, if they're not equal, we failed already. So we just return, get out of here, try another number. No point in checking the rest because it's already failed. So if sum one, let's assume it's equal. If sum one is equal to sum two, then return, well, that's not the case. So ignore this line. We go to the next line. If sum 2 is not equal to sum 3, in other words, if row 2 is not equal to row 3, again, we fail. Get out of here. No point checking the rest. But if it is, let's say they're equal. So, okay, we jump down here. If sum 3 is not equal to sum 4, that's 3 and 4. So the third row, the first column, if they're not equal, we're basically go on. We're checking. We checked the two rows, these two rows. Now we're checking this row against the first column. Okay, and then four and five. If the first and two, second, first and second column are not the same, return. If the second and third column are not the same, return. Now all the columns line up, so everything. Well, now we need to just check uh, seven, some six, and some seven. That's the last, uh, last column here against the first diagonal, and if they're uh, not equal, return, but if they are, we go to the, the last diagonal, here, this diagonal against that diagonal. If everything passes here, then it's all the same number, and we've, we've solved the puzzle. So if we get down this line, we have solved the puzzle. So let's go back up the top here. All right. We've done do screen. Now that just printed up the little square that we saw on screen. 
we go to some fill square that put the, the numbers in. Now we set time one equals the time. So whatever the current time is when we start this program, we're saving that for later. Now we just go to the main program loop, do, go sub add one, go sub validate, loop while increase. So in, until you press the key, it's just going to keep going. And finally, system. So what go sub uh, add one and validate? Well, let's take a look. We've seen do screen. Now add one. So add one, if we have, for example, of number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, if we add one, what do we got? Well, that'll be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine, zero. Well, that's no good because it's got a zero. All right, so we add another one. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine, one. Oops, we had a one here and a one here. Again, no good. So we just reject it. So the idea is we're just adding one, adding one, adding one, and we test, is it is it valid or not? If it's valid, we try it. So here's add one, we're just adding one to our square. Square I, that's this bottom right here. This is the one that changes most. Square I equals square I plus one. So if it happens to be nine, well, we can't use zero. So if square one is greater than nine, then square one equals one. We set it back to one, not to zero. And then of course we just square H equals square H plus one. So the one to the left goes up, just like we're counting. If that hits 9, we can't put it to 0, so we put it back to 1, but we add another 1 to this. That's that's why, for example, 7, 8, 9 becomes 7, 9, 0, and then, of course, that's no good. So, if square i is greater than 9, then square i equals 1, square h equals h plus h1. Now, if square h equals 9, or greater than 9, excuse me, then square h goes back to 1, and square g is square g plus square one. This just avoids uh, testing numbers with zeros because you know they're not going to work. We can't have a zero in there. So if we, we do all our tests here, we've added added the one and if we get through here, now we've got a valid a valid number to test, so we'll return. Back up here. Uh, yes, add one. Now we validate. So we've, we've added our, our digits up. We've come up with the next number. Now it's time to validate it. So now we're just testing squares against each other. Watch how this works. I is, is the square that changes most because it's the lowest. This is like the ones, tens, hundreds, thousands. This is going to change long before the A changes. So if square I is equal to square H, then return. Again, we fail because these cannot be equal. If square I is equal to square G, then return. If square I is equal to F, then return. So we test I against this one, against that one, against all the others now. So we test I against uh, D, C, B, A, all the way up to A. Now we test uh, square H, that's this one here. If square H is is equal to square G, then we uh, we fail because it's an invalid number. Notice we're not testing H against I because we already tested H against I where? Uh, yeah, right here, the first test we did was H against I. So there's no point to test H against I again. It's behind us. We've already tested this. So we test H against G, against F, E, D, C, B, and A. If the, none of them are equal, it could still be valid. So now we test G. Come down to G here. If G is equal to F, then return. If G is equal to... Uh, D return if G is equal to C. You get the idea. We're testing this number against all the numbers to the left of it, all the numbers greater than it. And if any of them are equal, then it's not a valid number. So we now move to the next one. Uh, it, G H. We check it against G F D and etc. And basically, we're we're just once we get like for example. When we get to E, that's here. We don't have to test against F, G, and H. We've already tested those. So as we go, we test each number against each square, each square against each square. And if it passes, if there's no, no duplicates, then permutations equals permutations plus one. What is this? Well, permutation, it's a fancy word for combinations. Basically, we're, we're keeping track of how many different numbers we're trying. And you see, we got the, the little ampersand there on there that tells the uh, cubasic that this is not a uh, just an integer it's a long integer because it's going to be a long number 
Now, once we've, we've got a valid number here, we'll go to fill square, which we saw before. It fills in all the digits and prints all the sums. Then after that, goes to test sums and lather, rinse, rinse repeat. That's pretty much it. Uh, yeah, we, we add one, and then we go to sub to validate to make sure there's no duplicates. And then when the validate, uh, where is that? Validate, the end of validate, of course, we go sub fill square, which loads up the square. And once we loaded our square, now we go sub test sums. So the whole idea is program starts with the number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. We add 1 to it. We go to sub validate to make sure there's no zeros, no duplicates. And then once we, we have a valid a candidate, if you will. Once we have a valid candidate, we go sub to fill square. Where is it? Yeah, fill square. This again prints all the numbers in there and adds the sums up. So we got we can check those. We we'll print the sums of, on screen and then we go sub test sums. We test the sums and if they all are are the same, then we've solved the puzzle and we come down here. If you remember, we saved. Time one, that was our, our start time, and then time two was our finish time. It's just equal to whatever the current time happens to be. So we print puzzle solved, we print permutations, and then here is the here is the long integer we were talking about earlier, permutations. We print that. Um, now we print uh, start time, time one. End time, time two, and then do loop while inquiry equals nothing system. So basically it just waits until, until you press a key and you're done. That's pretty much it. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. It's no interaction really. Just wind it up, watch it go. But the idea is we brute force this thing. We set, we consider this one long nine digit number. We start with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, which is the smaller, smallest number we can put in there, and then we add one until we get up to not well. Hopefully, you don't have to get all the way nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. It just tests every valid candidate as it goes. Add one, is it valid? Nope. Add one, is it valid? Nope. Add one. Oh, this one's valid. Let's test it. And lather, rinse, repeat. So that's all there is to it. Now, we've, we've solved the puzzle, we've got a report saying uh, you, how many permutations there were, which it turns out to be, I think, 62,000 there, about a bunch of them, and with start time, end time. So what purpose does this program really serve? Well, not much, really. I, I guess basically it's it's an exercise in, in figuring out how to solve things logically. Like I say, we're taking a brute force approach. We could have done something more sophisticated. But in any case... We're brute forcing this and solving the puzzle. Suppose we want to write a program to solve another math puzzle. Well, this is the sort of process or one process we could use. Just brute force. Uh, <laughs> not the most efficient or sophisticated technique, but it gets the job done. Another purpose for this puzzle, or for this program, excuse me, it could serve as a benchmark because you see we, we've got the start time and end time. Now I ran this before and it, it solves the puzzle. Let's do this here. We'll start her up. Uh, for example, I ran this exact identical program on my laptop, which is a far newer computer, it's fa faster processor. So I figured I'd zip through it like that. And it turns out this program uh, on this machine this uh, ran in just about 20 minutes, a little more than 20 minutes, whereas the other, uh, I started it earlier, it's still running. It looks like uh, about an hour, 40 minutes. So there you go. Uh, I think that the reason is on the, the Windows uh, 10 machine, QBasic is running in DOSBox, which slows it down versus native QBasic. So once this is finished, we'll see what the, the end screen looks like, and then we can move on to superiors. Uh, yeah. So here we have our solution, or one solution. Now we got 276, a 951438. And of course, if we check, of course, they all add up to 15. So there's the solution. But added bonus here, this is actually eight, or can be derived eight different solutions. Because, for example, if we just rotate this one, if we put 276 and then uh, what, uh, 618. If we just rotate that, that's four different solutions there. If we flip it, again, it'll all add up. So this this configuration can actually, you can derive eight different solutions from here.
So there's that. Now it's time for superiors. We have a great one this time. It's called uh, Technology Connections. Very, very thought provoking. This one. Uh, we'll bring this up a second. And I'll show it to you. Hang on. Superiors. All right, gang. We're here at uh, here. We're at a, a YouTube channel called Technology Connections, and. Uh, what can be said except it's just it's fascinating it the, the, the interesting stuff that it just in the most mundane things a host by the name of Alec very fella a very clever fella he uh, he talks about well there's one that's very uh, near and dear to my heart how do vinyl records hold stereo sound uh, and keeping in, in line with the sound that's the sound their movies made sound with a light bulb that's pretty cool just things you wouldn't really take you think you you take for granted you, uh, water heaters, uh, uh, box fans. Uh, for example, box fan, if you've ever seen one of those, he, he covers that. Uh, typically, you've got the pop, uh, uh, the speed switch is off, then high, then low. Why well, wouldn't be off? low and then high well it, again he covers that and there's actually a reason for it it's historical but if you've ever wondered why are things this way or, or how does something work this is the channel you need to check out he talks about the coolest eh, hurricane lanterns they have a specific purpose why does it look like that uh, radiometers how they work and that was cool too i like that one uh but just some of the okay lava lamps my wife loves lava lamps we actually in fact i got i think i need to change a bulb in one of them but she's got a couple around here that are fun humidifiers how they work just the most random again Again, mundane topics but it's they're fascinating when you really look into how and why things are the way they are oh well, I, was, I used to have one of these a cassette adapter for your portable uh, CD player well that talks about how that worked the adapter thingy uh, what's the difference between DVR plus and DVR minus well, I never really thought about that but it's that looks fascinating too uh, brown is the color weird color that was a fun one too. I watched that one a while back, but yeah, just the most amazing things. Why that particular sound? Why do klaxons sound like that? Again, the, a little bit of history. Why things uh, sound the way or work the way they do, and how things work. Messing with light. The world is the weird world in RGB. Uh, what do we got? CD RCA is very late, very weird. Video gamble. Why not fiber? All kinds of just the most you, things you would never think of. This gentleman, again, is a host by the name of Alec. He, very smart guy. He, he's gone and done some research. These things, again, I messed up. You're using too much detergent. Those those pad, iPods or the Tide Pods, I guess. But yeah, if you're interested in, or even if you haven't really thought about things, uh, here's another one. The electric cars prove we need to rethink brake lights. Uh, just stuff that you would never think about. Alec has gone ahead and, and done the thinking for us, uh, thank goodness. And he's just come up with some incredible videos. You need to check out this channel. All I can say that... It, yeah, I, I personally don't go there looking for a particular topic. I just check out the channel, and there's always something like, wow, that's fascinating. I never thought about it. But, yeah, so Technology Connections, you have to check it out. Say hi to Alex. Give him some thanks. Give him a little love. He's he's put in the work, let me tell you. some great stuff on this channel. So check him out, and, uh, yeah, you will be, well, entertained, I will say that, informed, and just, wow, it's amazing, this channel. you got to check it out. So go swing on in there, see what uh, what he's got to offer, and um, yeah, well, I guess that's about it. So uh, we'll head on back to the, the, the video and send you on your way. Hang on a second, here we go. All right, well, now we've reached the point of the video where I typically will thank you all for watching, so thank you all for watching. Uh, but before I send you on your merry way here, there are a couple points I'd like to speak about. Uh, chronic viewers of this channel will know that it's... It, I've made a point never to beg for for likes, for subs, for uh, well, comments are always fun. Uh, share so more people get you know spread the word. But hey, I'm not about trending. I have no plans to to monetize, so there's no Patreon to worry about that. The whole point of this channel is just to get whatever wisdom I've collected up in this big empty tank here out to people that can use it. So yeah, I don't I don't beg for th for some subs, subs, likes, this and that. However, having said that. Uh, many of you fine viewers out there have done me the honor of subscribing, and well, I want you all to know that I, I truly appreciate it. it. It's very rewarding to know that the the message is getting out there. People are seeing my work, and that 
that's very rewarding. So thank you very much for that. Uh, as far as uh, I've had some likes too, eight or nine, maybe a handful of likes. Uh, but sadly, uh, episode 19, I got my, my first dislike. <sighs> well, yeah, what do you do? Uh, but to that person, I'd like to say, well, thank you very much for for giving my channel a chance or giving my videos a chance. Uh, also, well, your opinion is as valid as any, anyone else's, so if it's not your cup of tea, ain't no harm, no foul. But I would ask, please, if, if there's something you dislike, tell me. Leave comments uh, along with questions and tell me what I can do to improve my content, to, to serve everybody better, because the whole point, again, is just to get this out there uh, you know, whatever wisdom I've collected over the years, if I can share with people, that's what this whole thing is about. So, I guess <laughs> I really have nothing else to add to that, other than I hope you found this one interesting and useful. Uh, until the next one, guys, adios and uh, hasta la pizza, baby. <laughs>